All right, so let's start taking a look at boost maps. Um, to start with, you'll see we've got an 850 T5R automatic stock tune here that we're looking at, and we've got three different axes, so let's kind of review what each one is. Our left axis here is throttle opening, and this directly relates to throttle opening from 0% to 55%. Um, this actually does not go to 100%, because past 55%, the throttle opening doesn't really change airflow that much, so Motronic 4.3 stops at about 55%. The bottom axis down here is RPM, from zero all the way up to a red line, and this axis represents the boost control solenoid's duty cycle. How hard are we duty cycling that solenoid to control the boost? The two arrows I've got here basically show throttle opening at about 20%. This is where boost will really start to develop below 20% throttle. You generally won't have any boost, and so you see that below that line, there's not really a whole lot going on with the boost control. The arrow on this side in the RPM represents about the zone where we tend to see boost develop, where actual first pound of boost pressure comes on. So this is where we really start to look at the boost control duty cycle, and this is generally around um, 2,000 RPM where we'll start to try to control boost so we don't get too much boost too early. So looking at the stock map, you can see uh, there's a little bit of a kind of a dip here at the very get-go on throttle opening. Um, that's primarily due to cylinder filling and the time it takes to fill up the induction tube, so that's kind of not too surprising. This peak at the top up here is right after the volumetric efficiency curve of the engine, so it's really having to duty cycle that um, boost control solenoid hard to be able to create any kind of boost, and then just by nature of the tuning, the factory default is to kind of taper the boost off as the RPMs near redline. And you really notice that up until about 50% throttle, we're really not getting our full boost value on a factory tune. Um, here in the mid-range at around 20 to about 40%, you can see the numbers are, or at least the values are kind of tepid, and then again they fall off again, another trait common to a factory boost curve. Okay, now that we've looked at a stock boost map, let's look at another 850 automatic uh, turbocharged, and this one's going to be just call it Tuner A. And let's take a look at what this tuner has done. Uh, again, under the 20% line, underneath that 20% throttle, not much going on. You're going to see that pretty consistently across the board from one tuner to the next. We can see, again, the mid-range here from that 20 to about 40%, 30% throttle. Not a whole lot going on. This particular tuner has come up past 30% and actually given a little bit more value, so you don't have to be right up at that 50% or more throttle to get your full boost target. In this case, you can really see what they've done. They've just taken the factory values and kind of just multiplied them. So it still has this peak in the middle and then a little bit of a taper off at the end. Um, in the mid-range here of RPM, we're really flat up until we're getting to like 4,000 or 4,500 RPM before we really start to see that boost value, unless, of course, we're full throttle. So if we were to come out of the gate and just stab the throttle down, we would see the boost follow this line right here as we'd be anything above 55% throttle. So you see it's real peaky and then falls off. So... This is one way that it, you could tune a car, but it's not really all that well done, and it, it doesn't give you a lot of what you're looking for in that linear control of boost development relative to throttle position. All right, our next tune file, we'll call this one Tuner B, and again, it's an 850 automatic turbocharged car. And you can see in this case, the boost map is really flat. Not much going on at all until we get to 55% or higher, what effectively we'll call wide open throttle. And here you can see that the boost is just flat and nothing going on until all of a sudden about 3,000 RPM it starts to climb and then right toward the end it really goes crazy. This may have been a tune file that somebody was trying to fight a problem. They might have had an issue with the car not developing boost and so they kind of ran the numbers to the ceiling to see how the car responded. This could have been just kind of a test file. It's hard to say but with no other real changes to the boost map in here um, this would really be a very switchy type of a tune. You'd either have full boost and full power at 3500 and up or you'd be on a stock map so this one would really be uh, pretty boring to drive on until you were full throttle and, and very little control alright so now we're looking at tuner C and in this map it's a lot more linear you can see that throttle position and RPM as they climb are going to have a nice linear boost duty cycle request. Now that initially sounds like a really good thing, but we have to be careful because again, under 2000 RPM, if we're running a high level of boost, uh, we're really capable of bending rods. So if we were to go full throttle right away and we're following this top line, we can see that these boost values are pretty high up until our 2000 RPM limit, which is where we're a little bit uh, concerned about creating too much boost too early. So this could have been for a car with forged internal, something like that. Uh, additionally, with this particular map, because this map inside the computer is overlaid on another map called volumetric efficiency, 
Depending on the cams in the car, the turbo selected, and the cam timing, this map might not have been as optimized for keeping the boost controlled, um, which again on a stock car with stock internals is really, really important. All right, now we'll take a look at an ARD green file. And so this is going to be for your 850 turbos with 15Gs or 16T turbos. Uh, it's about 17 PSI map, and again, you can see under 2,000 RPM, we keep the boost pretty t tailored in, pretty pulled back. Even though it's pretty tough to build boost under 2,000 RPM, it is possible, and of course, we want to be careful for that. So as well as coming up here to the 3,000 RPM zone, we see that the boost has been pulled back some as well. We don't want to have too much boost too early, potentially damage the connecting rods. And then once we get past 3,000 RPM, we really see that linear relationship between throttle opening and RPM show up, and that's what makes the tune so much more drivable. Now, with all that being said, it's important to realize that the, this map that we're looking at is not a map of boost pressure. It is the control of the duty cycle of the boost control solenoid. So if we were to look at this peak value and think that that equaled 17 PSI and look at this lower value and, for instance, suggest it made 5 PSI, that's not how you need to view this map. And it's important that we don't confuse these values in this map with being boost pressure values. This is how we control the duty cycle of the boost control solenoid to get our desired boost pressure. So now let's take a look at an ARD blue file. This is kind of similar to your standard stage 3 map, suitable for 18T, 19T, or K24 turbos. Uh, you can see that um, past the 2000 RPM where we really start to develop boost and up to around 3000 RPM where we want to be careful of the rods, we've got the map a little flatter, not too much boost going on, too crazy. And then once we get up to the top here, it becomes much more linear with our boost request uh, to that turbo. Now for these stage 3 files, with these larger turbos, the boost map is going to look a little bit different. Um, and the main reason for that is because the turbo is capable of generating so much more power, you don't have to duty cycle that boost control solenoid as much. So the variation from this lower area to this higher area may not seem as, as broad and wide, but the reason for that is because of the turbo increase. And that's something to be aware of as you get into larger turbos. The boost duty cycle precision becomes very critical because, again, that turbo can outspool that car real fast and the earlier RPM ranges if your boost control map isn't well suited for it. And then again down here below the 2000 RPM point, uh, we keep throttle pretty, uh, pretty relaxed so that we can keep the boost down and again protect the rods. Under 2000 it's not as much of a concern to build boost like that. Uh, however, if you had a manual car for instance and you were lugging it in fourth gear it would be possible. So we kind of keep this area a little bit lower as well to make sure we don't risk that. And so this is the main difference between boost maps. And it's not to say that one boost map is better than the next. That's really not the point of this. The point is for you as a user to be able to look at it and decide what do you want for your car, what suits your setup, and know what can be done and what can't be done within these systems.